Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I am joined by Pervez Ahmed. And welcome to the American Muslim Experience. Yeah, welcome back, listeners. Uh, thanks a lot, Zeki. Um, we haven't caught up in a while. Seems like forever, but uh, uh, that, well, at least uh, on, on the record, as it were, uh, yeah, we do get to see each other. Yeah, we we got to spend Thanksgiving together. I was uh, it was a good meal and good company. Uh, lots to be thankful for. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wasn't it? Now, I know how these Thanksgiving things go. Was that like the only Thanksgiving uh, feast you had or did you have others with other family? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a one family Thanksgiving person. <laughs> so you pick and choose, huh? It's, that's right. So whoever, whoever I, I deign to spend my Thanksgiving with has my undivided attention. So. <laughs> So that's to say, then, if we have a listener who you didn't spend Thanksgiving with, um, they, then they know, they're they know what they did. <laughs> they, know. <laughs> they know. They know. They know. They always know. That's they right. They always know. Yeah. So um, now uh, we've got like kind of an interesting show today. Um, we uh, are kind of digging back into not necessarily our backlog, that is to say, a backlog for our listeners, but something that we, uh, a conversation that we enjoyed uh, back in the summer, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess by way of background, uh, we were fortunate enough to sit once again with uh, – well, actually, I shouldn't say once again because the last time we had this guest on, we weren't in the same room together. So this was sort of a first for us. But we got to sit with Dr. Sherman Jackson, and we were able to engage in what I think was a very um, engaging conversation, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is something we were we were very uh, fortunate to be able to uh, not just be there to, to sort of witness, but we were the facilitators for this conversation, and uh, I, you know I was honored just to share the same space with with Dr. Jackson, and I'm glad that uh, he was gracious enough to allow us uh, to record uh, the the talk that he gave and make it. Uh, something that we could share with our broader audience uh, that that uh, was not able to be in that room. So that's what we are going to present here today. So yeah, uh, uh, please please excuse uh, the the uh, audio quality. I think the content itself is enough that that uh, folks will enjoy it. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to also kind of point out, um, and you know, just to by again by way of backdrop, um, you know, and that might allow our listeners to excuse uh, some of the acoustics in the room. Um, you know, we, we were joined uh, with an audience of about uh, I think it was about twenty to twenty five people, um, really kind of the veritable who's who in the Bay Area in terms of folks that are uh, captains of industry and doctors and you know, just thought leaders in the community. And we were all sort of sitting together and Dr. Jackson sort of took time out um, and away from his family on a vacation trip here in the Bay Area and uh, wanted to uh, participate in this conversation. And so um, I think that says a lot, not only, uh, I think that says a lot about Dr. Jackson in the sense that uh, he's a person not only who is accessible, but also just always ready um, and, and willing to engage in a meaningful conversation with people who are, you know, willing to engage him. So um, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what we were able to record and capture. And as Zucky mentioned, um, the group that got together, uh, they, uh, some of them have listened to this show and uh, wanted Zucky and I to uh, be facilitators for the conversation. So um, I guess with that being said, uh, go ahead and give it a listen now. Um, it's not like I'm everyone, right? So uh, I think Farhan did a great job of sort of laying down the foundation of how this sort of came about, um, and then just sort of continuing that uh, in, a, in a, just a small note would be to say that, you know, for a lot of you who were either not keeping up with all the dozens of, uh, you know, uh, WhatsApp texts that come your way, um, you know, we were just having a conversation around some of these issues, like, like Farhan mentioned, and we thought, hey, why not for the next bros gathering or whatever, uh, let's invite some of our community thought leaders and, and, and have them come and participate in the conversation. Uh, certainly more learned than uh, probably, you know, the, uh, the aggregate of all of us. So, so with that in mind, uh, we reached out to uh, some local uh, community uh, thought leaders of ours. We're, we're uh, very honored to be joined by our esteemed uh, Dr. Ali Atai, uh, faculty at Zaytuna College. Um, and then Dr. Jackson, um, you know, his, his, uh, Dr. Jackson and his wife texted saying that they would be in town, 
for vacation. And I thought, well, I'm going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to uh, uh, sort of uh, use my prerogative of knowing him or having the honor of knowing him for, what, 20 plus years. I don't want to date either of us here. Uh, but uh, And do a little bit of arm twisting. And uh, uh, Dr. Jackson and, and, and uh, Heather, in particular, Heather ja- Dr., you know, uh, Sister Heather Jackson, were uh, uh, you know, uh, kind enough to loan us Dr. Jackson for a couple of hours. So we're really, really honored to have Dr. Jackson with us. Um, so without uh, much more commentary, uh, we'd like to just sort of start off the conversation. So uh, Zucky and I were kind of chosen. I mean, for those who uh, keep up with podcasting or whatever, uh, Zucky and I have been doing a podcast now for three plus years uh, called Diffuse Congruence. If that's a mouthful, um, you've got the gentleman to my left to thank for that because it is a Jacksonian term, as I often like to say, uh, one that I learned in grad school. Um, and so uh, uh, diffuse congruence, and we've been doing it now for three plus years. Dr. Jackson, in fact, has been a guest previously on the show. Uh, and we like to sort of have long form interviews where we either talk about a person's life story or talk about critical issues to the community. Uh, in fact, our most recent podcast episode was with uh, Dr. Abdul um, um, Al Sayed, who's of course running for governor, governor in Michigan. So, um, if you feel the need, uh, please do check out that podcast. So, um, anyway, so Zaki and I thought this would be an opportunity for us to kind of do what we do uh, on a semi-regular basis and engage in Dr. Jackson in that in that in that discussion. So, uh, I don't know, Zaki, if you wanted to kick things off, okay. So, um, basically, I mean, I think. There's so many things that I think we want to pick Dr. Jackson's brain on uh, about, and uh, I think we one of the conversations that we were having uh, was just around the kind of um, interplay that we often see play out uh, on social media, uh, of all places, between activists, or if we could use these terms loosely, uh, activists for people who identify themselves as activists within the community and, and our scholars. Um, and we don't have to sort of draw attention to any particular instance. Uh, but I think, like, for example, for those who kept up with it, uh, maybe this was a couple, few months back, uh, where Sheikh Hamza, you know, was speaking in a, in a public forum and made comments with regarding Black Lives Matter, with regards to race relations. And, you know, through, again, social media and people chiming in about those comments, it kind of became this... Perfuffle and this uh, brouhaha over what Dr. Jackson or, 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 or Sheikh Hamza's comments were about, and he of course then issued apology and then was followed by more feedback and more articles being written and, and so on. So we live in an uh, age of think pieces. So could you could you you know for, for those of you who are unaware, you know, anytime some uh, just to give an example, over the past few days there's been. I don't even know if this would be a controversy, but you know, Disney said they might not cast a person of Middle Eastern heritage in the Aladdin movie, and this sort of launched a clickbait, you know, across the internet as people are like, "This is disgraceful," and then people are like, "I don't care," and you know, it becomes. And so we live in an age where uh, thought is being compressed into what will get people to click. You won't believe what Disney's doing, and then you click through, and you know. And I think to some extent, what happened with Sheikh Hamza uh, a few months ago was a reflection of. The think pieceization of the internet. I don't know if that's a word, but if it isn't, I'm going to claim it. Trademark. You know, that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So, I mean, so Dr. Jackson, if you could maybe sort of comment on what you perceive as sort of uh, if you keep up with uh, some of the conversations that happen, whether it's online or, or, or in your, your, your interactions with the community around those kind of issues. Bismillah <laughs> Um, in some ways, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst person to ask about these kinds of things because I'm a technophobe. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't do Twitter. I don't do Facebook. Uh, I don't do any of those things. And I'm on a few WhatsApp groups, um, and um, you know, family members who do do those things um, often communicate to me uh, what's going on. Um, I happen to be at RAS uh, when. Uh, the situation with uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf uh, unfolded. Um, um, I, I think, quite frankly, uh, that, that, that what we're looking at, I think that we tend to look at these kinds of issues in terms of scholar versus activist or activist versus scholar. Um, I, I tend to look at it in terms of uh, the overarching culture uh, that has developed among Muslims uh, at large. And I think that 
um, to me it seems that 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 there is that there's not sufficient focus, not sufficient emphasis uh, on the kinds of virtues that are necessary to shepherd any community through the inevitable vicissitudes that it's likely to go through. And that's going all the way back to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, you know, with I mean, j- just imagine the kind of chatter. I mean, if, if if Facebook and Twitter and all these kinds of things had been around during the time that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, was accused of adultery, I mean, we could imagine how out of hand that situation could have gotten were it not for the presence of you know a battery of of, 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 of virtues um, that, that that tend to to, to mitigate the the, 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 the the viciousness and the ferocity with which opinions are sort of exchanged in that regard. And part of it of course is the very presence of the Prophet himself um, and, 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 and and a communal recognition. In other words, even if you happen to be a Munafiq, I mean who's not in fact, who's flaming or fanning the flames of, of some of this controversy? You 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 live in the context of a broader community, um, uh, whose whose love and respect for the prophet um, will, will 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 mitigate uh, against your uh, engaging in that you know too too irresponsibly. So I think I mean, you know, um, benefit of the doubt, um, forgiveness. Um, you know the the, 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 the perseverance, the, the the ability, um, you know, to ab- absorb uh, things that you don't like in a context that you know is written by, you know, all kinds of confusions, raw feelings, etc. So I, I think it's a it's 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 a culture that we have, um, and and part of this seems to me, um, you know, to be coming from the overall social political context in which we live. It, it, it's it's no accident that. That, that the Muslim culture of exchange seems to be as uh, as free um, and as um, what, what's the word I'm looking for um, sort of as callous mm. um, as, as, as as that of the dominant culture mm. um, and so uh, it sort of dominate or be dominated and I think that it, it in that context it becomes very easy for us to lose sight uh, of any uh, a, a broader uh, 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 interest that may be served or damaged depending on how, how we negotiate these things. And again, I mean, you know, many people would hear me talk like that would, 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 would immediately assume that, well, you know, this is just sort of status quo uh, protection. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you want to just preserve, preserve the status quo, you know, allow for no dissent, allow uh, for people to do uh, outrageous and egregious things and not be called to account for them. And I think that that kind of thinking is part part of the problem. I mean, we, we do this with, with people we love all the time. Uh, we look for, we search for, uh, we hunt for uh, the right words, the right tone, um, the right prioritization uh, with which to express ourselves. Um, with, 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 without backing off of, I mean, the issue at hand, you did something wrong and I'm going to address you about what about what you did. But I think that the medium through which we're doing this now is so impersonal. I think we have very little regard for how um, our words uh, can affect um, not only the people to whom we are speaking, but but the atmosphere that is sort of bred by those words. And personally, um, you know, I, I hope that if I'm ever embroiled in something like that on a personal level, that 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 Allah will give me the the courage and and and, and the strength to actually model the kinds of virtues that we need to bring to bear on these kinds of situations. No community um, uh, by constantly just tearing each other apart. This this unbridled alienation on both sides. It will take a toll. Um, and, and oftentimes, any particular issue uh, in this context, but oftentimes, you know, you end up with situations where, um, you know, we're sitting in a room of, 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 of brothers right now, and depending on how we've managed um, those inevitable differences that emerge among us, you know, we could be sitting in a room full of 
people are internally bleeding. You know, you don't necessarily see it, but th there are wounds there that have been inflicted by others within the room as a result of which, um, you know, we really can't bring the best out of our, uh, our collective efforts because, you know, the trust is gone, the, the, the mutual identification with each other is gone, um, um, we don't even like each other necessarily. Um, so I, I think it's very important for us to, 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 to be more attentive to the way in which we do al-amr bil-ma'ruf wa nahan al-munkar. As the, as the scholars of old would say, you know, you don't, do, you don't condemn a munkar mm -hmm. in a way that itself breeds a greater munkar. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't do that. Um, um, and, and, I, and I really do think because as, a, as, a, as, a, as an American Muslim community, particularly in the moment in which we're presently living, um, you know, we really need um, sophisticated, courageous, frank, um, realistic conversations um, that enable us to get to the bottom of what is really going on and enable us to take advantage of the best ideas within our community and our ability to communicate uh, is, is under. I think in some ways, you know, the present situation will do to, in fact it already is, going to the Muslim community, um, what, what this sort of politics of personal destruction has done to the broader community. And that is that uh, many of the people who might have some of the best things to bring to the table stay away from the table, all right, because they don't want to be embroiled um, in this kind of politics of personal destruction, right? Um, um, people who may have something to say um, won't say anything, um, you know, for fear of uh, of being viciously attacked or having um, this affiliation attributed to them or that affiliation attributed to them. Um, and so I think that overall um, we end up hurting ourselves. And um, you know, I just hope that 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 Allah will bring forth in the community uh, those among us who can really model the manner in which we go about addressing issues honestly, uh, frankly, uh, straightforwardly, uh, while observing the virtues um, that, that are reflective uh, of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. John, obviously, hand it over to you for like maybe a follow-up or you well, want to flesh out anything that Dr. I mean, it, I guess in, in, in a broader sense, Given that we are living in an age where so much communication is done via social media, I mean, what are and granted, you just you said you don't use it, but maybe from the perspective of an outsider looking in, what would you consider uh, maybe some best practices as we engage in issues that are important and we want to have meaningful dialogue uh, about these issues? Well, let me let me let me just say this. I mean, um, in, in some ways, Zaki, I mean, to to, to to just be frank and, and, and honest about it, in some ways. Uh, I, I'm, I find the question somewhat strange. Not, 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 not in its substance. Uh, the, the question, is, substantively speaking, is fine. Um, but why should I uh, have anything uh, of, of, of marginal value to say about um, the nature of social media uh, and, and all these kinds of and all these kinds of things? Um, I'm, I'm not a social media expert, um, um, and, and, and I think that. You know, the, 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 the distribution of labor is, important, is an important part of, of, of maintaining the kinds of conversations that we need to maintain. Perhaps this will lead to, to one thing I might say. I mean, part of the problem is that um, um, in my field, let's say, for, of, of Islamic studies, and I'm sure, you know, in your, your respective fields, I mean, generally speaking, you're dealing with people from those fields, all right? And they sort of, they, they sort of hold themselves to the standard. Uh, of, of that field, um, nobody wants to be, you know, look like an idiot. Um, nobody wants to look like they're incompetent, like they're not really uh, up on their game. Um, and so that has a tendency, you know, to, to, to keep the conversation uh, at a certain level. Well, we don't have that in social media. I mean, anybody can come in um, and, and chime in um, from 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 any perspective. Um, um, and 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 so, you know, here I am. You know, uh, you know, I'm. 
I'm, I'm, I'm an Islamic studies scholar. Uh, some would consider me a public intellectual, um, but I have nothing to do with technology. Um, and then people would expect me to have something uh, of value to say about something that basically I know very little about. Um, and oftentimes, you know, people feel pressured. Well, they're looking for me to say something, so I guess I better say something. Um, um, and that something may may, may not be, um, and it, it may it may not be appropriate. It may not serve the interest at hand. Um, so 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 I'm not sure. Um, you know, at a at a at a sort of thirty thousand foot level, because uh, I'm not really sure what that what that whole uh, social media terrain looks like uh, from a thirty thousand foot level. Um, perhaps if I were given some uh, concrete situation on the ground, I mean, I might have something to say about that. Um, but 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 the overall situation. Um, well, I think I think we would be remiss. <laughs> I, I I know that's I know that's uh, that's well, disappointing. For, but for, for what it's worth, I think it looks the same from up there to people who are in it. It's just a big mess well, that people are trying to. Yeah, I, and I agree with that. But I just think like we'd be remiss to to not remind ourselves as if we needed a reminder. But we're sitting here in the heart of Silicon Valley, where you know if we're talking about technology and what technology has done to communication or social media. Right here in our midst, we've got people representing from, from you know, from corps like Google and, and uh, maybe even Facebook and, and Twitter and LinkedIn and, and all, eBay. all these others, eBay, sorry, uh, and all these others. So I mean, Google, I, I'd like to hear from you guys. Right? Did I not say Google? Um, right. You know, I, because I think that, and I think here, you know, rather than sort of jumping from topic to topic, because I mean, I think we want to talk about a lot. A lot I think it'd be important to kind of have the, you know, you guys all let's just all chime in, and then we can move the conversation how we want to. So. Um, yes. That's a quick question. The physician wants it. <laughs> so take away the take away the social media aspect, and, and you said that there is a there is a universal. Let's say the sunnah, right, of, of a universal of interacting with with people. So can we like can we use that? Is there some universal to say what are the interactions of, of keeping the, the etiquette, the Islamic etiquette, between people, whether it's images or text? Hmm. What is it like? Can we get beyond that and say, uh, you know, I understand that you're not in that space, but isn't there uh, some universal rules or just ground rules of checks and balances and the way that we should, uh, you know, uh, interact in that space? You know, I'm I'm going to say something here that 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 is going to sound both uh, uh, very controversial on the one hand and and in, and in some ways maybe even a cop out, but it's not a cop out, and I and I and I say that. Uh, with, with, with all sincerity, um, I think that we can talk about in theoretical terms what some of those parameters are. All right. I mean, we have. Uh, I mean, the Prophet told us, and they that you know, even to say something about your brother or sister that might be true in a manner that hurts their feelings is actually riba. All right. I mean, so we we have. You know, the Prophet taught us. If there are three of you, no two of you whisper. All right. I mean, to that extent, um, being uh, considerate of our brothers and sisters' uh, uh, feelings, and yet we have real, concrete, everyday social, political, cultural, and all kinds of issues um, to be addressed, and we cannot plug those kinds of instructions in in a black box, ipsy dixit type of way. We always have to be measuring them in the context of who, what, when, what else may be implicated, long term, short term, etc. And here's where the controversial part of my statement comes in. I think that we all have to um, um, hold ourselves responsible um, for being sort of ethically literate as Muslims. And by that I mean, you know, to know that that it is not a slam for me to hurt your feelings. It is not a slam for me to backbite. Um, when you think about the fact that I could see you actually in the act of adultery or fornication, I could see you with my own two eyes, and without three other witnesses, I can't say anything. To that extent, hmm. all right. I mean, your, your, your honor, okay, um, is is valued in Islam, and yet, and yet, um, 
I may have to call you out in the context of X, Y, or Z situation, depending on uh, the, 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 what's implicated in that particular situation. And, and, and what this means is that while I have to be ethically literate as a Muslim to know, you know, the, the, the boundaries of my own conduct, um, that ethical literacy can never in and of itself be exclusively relied upon to tell me exactly what I should do in any particular situation. That always entails a turning to Allah and asking for His guidance. And all too often what we want is an Islam in a sense that enables us to dispense with God. <laughs> that we get all the answers in a, in a manual um, that can be applied um, in an ixibdictic black box fashion that will guarantee the outcome. Well, there is no such a thing. Um, um, but see, this is why the virtues have to be in place. Because in my attempt to, to apply whatever values I see fit to apply, all right, I may misfire, all right? And then the question becomes, you know, is there enough uh, goodwill? Is there enough uh, forbearance? Is there enough uh, forgiveness in the community to keep my mistake from becoming, you know, you know, somebody does to me what I did to them. And the Prophet himself said, what? La dalar wa la dirar. The fact that I do something to you does not give you the right to do it back to me. Right? Now that, that, may, that, may, that may run counter to, you know, our basic assumptions. But this is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom we all claim as our teacher. And this is what I mean in terms of, and it's going to be hard. It's, it's not necessarily easy. Um, but I think that, you know, with that, with that ethical literacy and, you know, the, the, the understanding that we have to train ourselves to, 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 to always be mindful that without Allah's guidance, all right, um, we ourselves do not have the solutions. And I think that if we, if we train ourselves to do that um, consistently enough, uh, we, 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 we may find ourselves in a much better situation than we're in right now. Um, can I ask the, the same question for Bez asked, but let's take the word social media out of it, because uh, I think you kind of proclaimed your ignorance about it, and that's fair. Uh, social media has caused something. And so let's take social media... Caused something which I'm going to explain, which is it's exacerbated, for lack of a better word, or highlighted the current and always persistent crisis of authority in <laughs> Sunni Islam in particular, mm -hmm. which historically was driven by certain people attaining this level of righteousness and or knowledge, through which others recognize them, and through that communal recognition, people, let's call them now scholars, sheikhs, whoever's, uh, kind of gained authority. The advent of this technology has resulted in people gaining a voice to masses without necessarily the requisite knowledge, or maybe they have it, uh, or maybe they have other skills that are more important than knowledge, for all I care. I, I'm not here to judge, uh, but let's call them the activists. Uh, and so I don't want you to get out of the activist scholar question is what I'm getting at in my question. Uh, they therefore... So you think I'm fudging? Well, I'm just saying that you like to engage in fun debates, and I want to make sure that we don't lose that part of the, the, the question. They have therefore amassed what I'm going to call a level of authority in the public Muslim space, not earned in the traditionally known way yeah, of society, but, but, but. and therefore they can say things to the Muslim masses, which can agree, disagree, challenge the legacy authority that was often earned or established, let's call it broadly through scholarship or piety or righteousness in small spaces earned over time into larger spaces. And I would contend uh, with this also you have uh, other human things at play, call them jealousy, call them uh, all kinds well, of... Well, that's, that's the ethical literacy part. Yes. So that you've answered. So I just want to ask more about the authority. Okay. All right. I don't know about this, but... I'm, I'm going to answer this as honestly as I can. All right. Um, um, 
because when you when you when you when you express new ideas, especially within the midst of a community that is itself in crisis, uh, that itself can be a shock to the sensibilities. Um, in times of crisis, uh, trust is at a low, and suspicion is, is at a high, um, and you and, and you wonder, uh, you know, every time you hear something that that that's not reflective of what you've understood to be the norm, you know, whose side is this guy on? Okay, I mean that that's what communities in crisis uh, tend to do. Right. Uh, you know, it's it just like, like like Allah said in the Quran. You know, with the in Surah the Qalam. You know, when when the when the when the when the when the, when the people go out. You know, uh, to, to to their to their orchards, and they and they and they find that their orchards have been destroyed. You, you, you know, this what this what I'm talking about. Uh, the first thing, the first thing, first thing they do. Right? I mean, that that that's what that's what we do when we are afflicted like that. Um, so, but here goes. I I recently published an article entitled "The Islamic Secular." And the whole point of that article was to try to lay down some foundational building blocks on the basis of which we could get some clarity with regard to the boundaries of Sharia's jurisdiction. All right? Um, and therefore, the fact that beyond those boundaries, other bases of authority would prevail. That if Sharia's jurisdiction is this broad, then the jurist's jurisdiction, the scholar's jurisdiction is only this broad. And that beyond that, okay, um, other forms of training and expertise would have to take over. And I think that what has complicated our affairs today is that we have no clarity in terms of the boundaries of Sharia. And by the way, see this is getting complicated already. But anyway, I, I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Uh, and, and hopefully you guys will have an opportunity to read the article because uh, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it full justice in, you know, a short setting like this. But but part of the problem that we have is this. If we assume, all right, the 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 the, the jurisdictional boundaries of Sharia, all right, to be infinite, all right, then the scholars are authorized, they have an authoritative voice on absolutely everything. And what that will do is give those outside that scholarly community who themselves may be much better trained in this or that specific area, all right, a sense that they are being dominated by these scholars who don't really understand what's going on here, all right? All right. And as a result, you get a sort of revolt. And part of the problem with the revolt is that it tends to do the same thing in reverse, that I have a PhD from wherever, and I'm literate, and I'm a Muslim, and I understand Islam, um, I can speak on um, whatever I think I should speak on, all right? Because I'm, I'm literate, I'm educated, yeah. all right? And so what we have is this mass confusion, this clash of jurisdictions. Okay? Alright? And I think that we have to get more clarity with regard to where these boundaries are. And let me try to... Um, this article was not some kind of Jacksonian innovation. Uh, it, it was more an excavation because it's always been there in Muslim tradition. Always. Right? Going all the way back to the time of the Prophet. Right? When the Prophet set up the, 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 the army in war for Badr. The companion, Al-Hubab ibn Mundhir, came to the Prophet and said, uh, is this battle plan, is this revelation, or is this just your idea about what a good battle plan is? And the Prophet said what? 
No, this is my idea about what a good battle plan is. Al Hubab said, What? I have another idea. Right? And the Prophet himself then is implicitly acknowledging that your idea may be better than my idea, although I'm the Prophet. That's not within the boundaries of my, my jurisdiction to know the factual all right, realities of what a good battle plan is. All right? Similarly, I mean, the Prophet tells some... I'm sorry? The date farming. Yeah, the date farming. The, the Prophet tells some people about their, their date trees. The trees die. He tells them. You know, when I tell you what Allah and his, what I tell you what Allah said, then take it, because I will never invent lies against God. But you may know more about your worldly affairs outside of those parameters than I do. And what I'm saying is that wh- why this is the Islamic secular, because that kind of talk makes lots of Muslims uncomfortable because they're saying, Whoa, you're talking about Islamic and secular, right? A dichotomy, yeah. right? Between the Islamic and the secular. And what I'm saying is no. Islam is infinite in its jurisdiction in terms of the fact that everything we do is under the adjudicative eye of God. All right? Sharia, however, okay, is God's direct explicit address to us. Okay? So, if, you, if, 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 if we have to figure out you know, I don't know what the policy for, I don't know, cleaning the rug in this, I don't know, whatever, you follow, I mean, you know, how, how late the building should be open, for example. All right? No, I'm very serious about that. Um, um, Sharia is not going to tell us that. All right? And yet, on the basis of the virtues, the sense of piety, the sense that God is watching us, we bring our most God-conscious thoughts to bear, all right, on that issue, although it's not a Shari'i issue. So I'm not secularizing. This is the Islamic secular. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, deliberations that are outside Sharia, but are still within the boundaries of Islam, because we are all responsible for everything we do as Muslims. Though Sharia is not going to tell us what a speed limit should be. Sharia is not going to tell us what the occupancy rate of this room would be. These are things for which we have to draw on human ingenuity. And doing so under the understanding that although God does not give us an explicit, when al hubab and al-Mundur gave the Prophet those instructions, all right, he was instructing the Prophet in terms of what he felt, all right, would be the most likely plan to succeed because that is something that he knew God wanted them to do although he had no explicit instructions on that in that regard and I think that part of our problem is that we've been overburdening Sharia Mm -hmm. and therefore overburdening the scholars alright asking too much of the scholars alright and then when they attempt to give that to us alright we recoil and then you get the counter the counter action, all right? Which, which, which tends to go in the opposite direction. And then one last thing I'll say about this. Even if Anas Usman is the expert on Google, all right? If the question is a question of fact, does this or does this not Will this or will this not? All right? Anas Usman is not masoom. Even if he has expertise in that area. All right? So this remains an issue. The point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, if I can say so without any bias, sometimes, you know, the activists may be a bit more, a bit more quick, all right, and saying, this is not an issue for the scholars. All right, I'm the the political activist or or, or you know the, the the community organizer. All right, be quiet and listen to me. All right. Well, in a general sense, all right, I accept that division of labor. But beyond that, the fact that you're the community activist doesn't make you infallible. Right. And even I, as a scholar, may say, 
that's crazy what you're suggesting. All right? Or it's fine, but it runs up against this particular Sharia virtue or this Sharia rule. And this is why I'm saying we have to have ways of continuing the conversation. And I think that those of us who are in positions of leadership and influence, we have to model the way in which we can sustain these conversations without them tearing our communities apart. And that means that Dr. Jackson has to be willing, has to be willing to take it on the chin, to take the knobs in the back, to take the stabs in the heart. Because to get down in the mud and respond in kind, that will not serve our community. That will not serve our community. Somebody's got to model the behavior. Somebody's got to model the behavior. I'm sorry for Han Yu. A follow-up question on that, which is to say that those boundaries of what is considered within the bounds of what Sharia would dictate, is it then in the authority of the lay person, the recipient of knowledge, to be able to try to identify where their boundary lies in terms of the knowledge that they're seeking of that individual? So, you know, if I'm going to some scholar because I have a question that I am unclear whether there's Sharia dictates around right. that question, right. or if it's merely pastoral care that I need, or nothing, maybe I need to go to an expert in some other field, is it upon, incumbent upon me to use my faculties to identify when I think that that person has overstepped their boundaries as a scholar because of their own infa- their own fallibility. No, I no, no. I, I want to. I, I, I want to be clear here. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a false standard to hold any scholar, all right, any human um, beyond the prophet himself, and even in his case, Esma has a meaning other than what we generally think. But to hold any human being to the standard of infallibility, no, no, none of us is infallible, all right. Um, I, I remember 1999, I think it was, it was a conference in uh, uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, Shidiya of Sharia Scholars. Uh, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think you were there. Sharia Scholars Association of North America. I thought you were there. I was going to say that. Um, First time I ever met you, actually. And, 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 and we had a, a, a scholar uh, 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 from, from, the, from the Middle East. Uh, from the Gulf, uh, he's actually Kurdish, but he's, you know he lives in the Gulf, and he's a very well-known scholar. All right, and he was invited to give the keynote address. So he arrived on Friday night, and he 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 you know sat down and we were talking, we were you know getting all asking questions. He was giving responses, etc. So Saturday night came around, and he got up and he said. Before I begin my keynote address, I want to say the following. Last night, someone asked me a question, and I gave them a fatwa. And I want to announce tonight that I have changed my fatwa. I no longer support what I said last night. And he said, now if I have changed my fatwa after having been here less than 24 hours, what should you guys who've been here maybe 24 years be doing? So he himself acknowledged, I made a mistake. All right? I misassessed the situation. And what I said was wrong. So I think, I think it's wrong. And see, that's how we undermine religion. You follow what I mean by that? I mean, I mean we hold the scholar you know, up to this standard of infallibility. And then when his humanity comes out, well, religion can't be true. Right? I mean, we, we, we set this up. All right, so I, I think we have to be careful about that. I think, in general, for Han, what we are talking about is a general level of religious literacy. I mean, those boundaries don't have to be, you know. It's like you go outside, you know, and you you you, you look up into those mountains, and you know the, the you know the the, the 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 green trees against the mountains. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? No, no. Is that not? Am I not making sense? No, no, no. I'm very serious. You know, if, if, if I'm looking from a distance at a tree, all right, I can sort of tell where the boundaries of the tree stop. But I'm not sure I could draw the boundaries of the tree. You, you follow what I mean by that? I mean, they're... Right? I mean, they're, they're, they're fuzzier. Huh? Right? I mean, very, very clear, all right, but not very defined. Okay? And I think that that's the way it's going to be with these kinds of things. 
a general level of literacy gives us a sense, all right, a reliable sense of where those boundaries begin and where those boundaries end, all right? And even on that, there will be back and forth within the community about what is and what is not within and without. And, and that's fine, all right? But I think we have, you know, the general ground rules, okay, on the basis of which we can say that man, it can tell me. I mean, I mean, I've been working on this stuff for 25 years or so. I mean, this is going all the way back to my PhD dissertation. That's, it's there. I mean, man, it can tell me that, you know, when the sun does this, it's time for Lord. But I might have better eyesight than Manic. So I may be the person who says, when the sun actually does that. Hmm. Did, did you follow what I mean by that? That's the distinction between law and fact. That's basic in Sharia. And I think we have to bring some of this back so that we get these boundaries straight. All right? And there's another dimension to this. We cannot have Islam. You know, there's a woman at Princeton who wrote a book entitled How Judaism Became a Religion. And her argument there is that before the Enlightenment, Judaism was a language, a culture, an ethnicity, a civilization, and a religion. The Enlightenment, in order to control religion, all right, reduced it basically, all right, to theology and liturgy. That's what religion is. So civilization is no longer a part of it. Culture is no longer a part of it, etc., etc. All right? And in this way, all right, then who comes to preside over civilization? Of course, the modern state. Who comes to preside over culture? All right? And in that way, religion remains domesticated. Okay? We have to understand that Islam is more than just theology and liturgy. And we as Muslims, we are responsible for producing the kind of plausibility structure that sustains Islam's relevance and efficacy in the world. And that means that persons who are producing culture, culture, all right, are just as important as per persons who are working on Sharia. If we're taking Islam as more than just religion yeah. in a narrow, narrow sense, right? I was, I was in, to give you a sense of how really critical this is, I was in a, an email conversation with a, uh, uh, a Christian intellectual a few days ago. And um, one of the notes he wrote back to me was that, you know, in 1999, he said, I was on the Charlie Rose show with uh, a, a same-sex couple who were arguing for the uh, validity, the, 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 the sanctioning uh, of, of same-sex marriage. And he was uh, giving an argument against it. Um, and this person, one of those persons said to him this, is what he related to me. I have no interest in arguing with religious people like you. Because Will and Grace is the number one show in America. I'll get your children. Where the boundaries are not drawn, then you can't see that as an engineer, or as a producer, or as a comic, or as whatever, you have a role to play. It's all on the religious scholar. It's all on those related to Sharia. And in that way, we end up abdicating our responsibility as Muslims. But this begins, you know, with one of my estimation, is a proper understanding of the landscape. If those boundaries aren't properly drawn, all right? then we can't see the distinction between one and the other. I mean, I mean, I mean, the other side of this is that, I mean, if it's a question of fact, all right, I mean, you can tell me, I think that, you know, you shouldn't have done that because it has this and that uh, 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 result or, or, or implication, 
Alright? But there is no shari'i, there is no sharia dictate. Can sharia tell us who to vote for? It's haram for me to vote for uh, Donald Trump. Whoa, 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 where am I? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. we, we'd like to say yes. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, we can point to certain implications that would heighten, all right, that, that likelihood, all right? But those implications are still questions of fact. Right? That, I mean, and some facts are clear, all right? This is like some of the ulama, you know, the ancient on the map. When the Mongols came into Muslim lands, all right, they said it's haram to sell weapons to the Mongols. Okay? Because in that case, the relationship between those weapons and the Mongols killing Muslims was direct. Okay? And explicit. And in that case, if we have direct and explicit conclusions, then we can say, yeah, it's haram to vote for them. But in the absence of that, these are factual issues that we continue to discuss. And the advantage here is that I don't end up impugning your dean. Okay? Because I don't like your politics. Hmm. Not going to impugn your politics. Maybe strongly. But there's a difference between that and saying you're not a good Muslim. You're a monatic. You're weak in your dean. And I think that, that's, that you know some of these issues... I mean, they, 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 are, they are doing a job on us. They're, they're doing a job on us. So, um, so you mentioned Will and Grace and, and the media. And I'm, I'm glad we have Zucky here since he has expertise in, in, in the area of the media. That's kind of come to be seen as a tricky area by Muslims. Unnecessarily so, um, uh, in my view. So... What what is I wanted just to get your perspective on this theme of navigating uh, between you know what is within the jurisdiction of, of the Sharia and how we apply that to to the media because this is perhaps like kind of a, a, a minefield in many respects and you know like how do we navigate the the, the, the choices of like okay you know do we participate in this do we not participate in that. On the other hand, if we choose not to participate in certain things, we lose control of the message and how powerful the media is. So, yeah. wanted to get your thoughts on that and Zaki's thoughts as well. Well, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm assuming that I, you know, that I, that I've adequately apprehended your 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 your, your question um, because you just spoke in terms of this and that, and you know, not specific, uh, concrete. Um, I, 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 I think that there are um, some very treacherous there's some very treacherous terrain out there uh, to be navigated and I think that um, um, and, and this, is, this is why it's so important you know for us to bring back a level of harmony and trust to our community and that the kind of trashing each other Constantly, in the way that we see it happening, uh, more often than we would like, um, really undermines our ability to engage in the kinds of conversations that will allow us to say something meaningful in response to your question. Because the reality is, is that Sharia has always recognized the necessity of maximizing benefits and minimizing harms, and it has never proceeded on the idea. That there will be that, that that life, that reality, all right, will always present you with either 100% benefits and 100% harms, and therefore you can be very clear as to how you go about navigating that terrain, right? And so when we end up in circumstances where um, where where there are benefits, or there are things that that are haram. All right, and things that are halal or beneficial. The question is, how do we navigate that? How do we no negotiate that? And my point is that Sharia has always recognized, in a general sense. Now there are some hard parameters. Sharia would never justify, okay, uh, sleep with her. Okay, right? Um, um, 
but 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 beyond what I would consider to be a a relatively narrow scope of issues, um, we're constantly trying to maximize maslaha and minimize mafsada. The problem we have, however, is that if we don't trust each other, all right, we can't have that conversation. All right, and I'm not even gonna. I'm not even going to put myself on the line, all right, to speak in a matter, all right, that reflects this kind of uh, benefits, harms analysis, all right, for fear of what? For fear of being excoriated. I, I remember uh, at, at that conference that I mentioned uh, before, I remember one very, very prominent shit, and you notice I'm not saying any names because... You know, that's where we are today. No, no, no it's, it's unfortunate. Right? That's where we are today. But one very, very, very prominent sheikh, uh, you know, on, on the question of home mortgages, he started out his answer by saying the following. I'm going to give you my opinion on this issue. All right? And I don't think my opinion is going to be very popular. But I have seen too many of my colleagues die with opinions still in their breasts because they were afraid to express them for fear of being excoriated by the community. Right? And I think that, you know, we harm ourselves, right, when we sustain that kind of culture. And I think that, you know, one of the, one of the reasons why, you know, I, I felt that your question was a bit, not, not to me, no, 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 it's, like, it's a good question, but, but in a sense, in other words, you are responsible for this, not me. And I don't mean you, I mean the community. I mean, we, we, we're going to the scholar, what can we do? Well, stop talking about people like that. I mean, stop, stop tolerating. And no, seriously, I mean, you know, people get on the, on the, on, 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 on the internet and just, just, I mean, just, just trash people. And what do you do? Nothing. And then come to the scholars, what can we do about this? One, okay. Just with respect to that question, and I'd love to hear if you have it. I think the media is public, but I mean, I would personally offer, and I don't know what everybody in the room does, uh, as a recent person who moved here, uh, that in almost all of our lives we face the exact same trade offs. Mm -hmm. You have a startup, your venture capitalist offers you terms. Those terms, as would be understood under Sharia, I mean, Allah Rabbi Alana said, I wish the Prophet told us more about interest. Because he was finding situations just shortly after the Prophet's passing, that they didn't know how to identify the nature of those transactions. And yet, that person is a successful business person in the eyes of everyone, and they donate generously, and everybody loves them because it's private. There are confidentiality agreements. We don't navigate. Those waters are navigated often in such a way that you are not. But if you're a cultural figure, mm -hmm. you're in the media, yes. then everybody can in see exactly the trade-offs you've made hmm. and they can also opine on themselves from an ivory tower or a you know a, a humble space whatever which way they want to do it or their daughters or their sons and what they would like them to do or not to do uh, outside of Islam I'm being candid and and therefore um, but these are these questions I think are fundamental to every trade-off that we are actually engaging in in our everyday lives, if we're engaged in business mm -hmm. of some sort, which everyone is making an income of some sort, largely here. Uh, it's just, in some cases, people see them much, much, much more obviously as trade-offs. And uh, I, So my, my take on these things is also, if you don't know, just be humble, because you're making your trade-offs before God. They're making theirs. And you, if you have advice, offer it, but they're, they're just making a public trade-off. You know, I, I want to be also cognizant of the time and, and Dr. Jackson's time in particular. Um, but I wanted to kind of, this isn't necessarily shifting the conversation, but it's really... But shifting. It, no, <laughs> not really, because you took the conversation, and I think the questions took the conversation where I kind of wanted to go and, and talk about, is that, you know, for, for someone who grew up in the 90s, I remember, uh, you know, attending conference after conference, and I think this may be still the case in, in, in some conferences I haven't been in a while, 
But, you know, in a, in a, uh, Dr. Taha uh, Jabir Alwani, rahimullah, he said this then, where, like, you know, after attending conference after conference, it seemed that the obsession among Muslims was issues of halal and hidal, right? Of, of the sighting of the moon and permissibility <laughs> issues. And I remember just, again, as, as, a, as a someone growing up in the 90s, you go after conference, like, well, like, the bihami, you know, gender issues, music, permissibility, impermissibility, these were the sort of constant sort of ubiquitous questions at every conference you went to. But I feel like what's happened now, and maybe this is just a product of me being over 40, where, where, where I feel like things that were glacial maybe a decade ago uh, around conversations that we consider now to be so quote-unquote mundane or what have you, whereas now I feel we live in a time where we're crossing or we're, or we're, or we're, or we're discussing issues like uh, gay marriage and uh, the legality of gay marriage and whether or not Muslims should, should support such an in, in initiatives or transgendered bathrooms and, and where transgendered people fit in with regards to what bathrooms they should use. Or I remember after, you know, after the Orlando uh, shooting, you know, people were holding vigils outside, you know, Muslim, I, I, sorry, Muslims were holding vigils outside gay nightclubs. And, and I'm not here to, again, pass judgment, but I feel like, wait, where was the conversation around those issues? We had conversations for decades around the permissibility of, you know, uh, music, uh, and again, not downplaying that issue, but where, where were the real conversations among our scholars or hearing from our scholars, as well as among the community, with regards to what I consider to be real existential questions for the community and for the, uh, and, 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 and for the future? But but, so, but, 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 but but let me ask you something. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, you know, because 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 I mean, I, I I hear this often. You know, okay. I mean, you know, wh wh where are the scholars on the issue of of, of 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 let's say you know you know you know gay marriage, right. you know homosexual acts? I mean, look, I mean, th 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 there are two dimensions here. Okay. What do you want the scholars to say? For fourteen hundred years, over fourteen hundred years. This has been a clear issue. What do you want them to say? Now, how, how we go about navigating the political terrain, all right, is another issue, okay? But that may involve more than the voices of scholars. And, I, you know, sometimes it sounds as if, you know, we are demanding of, of, of the scholars that which they, in good conscience, cannot do. Um, so, 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 I mean, that, I think we have to be careful about that. Uh, I, 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 mean, I mean, something right. may be, something may be, you know, at that I mean, conference. I'll, 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 I'll call, I'll, I'll draw attention to something you yourself have said, yes. either publicly or in an article, I can't remember. Uh, on this issue, you're not going to embarrass me, are you? No, no. Right. Um, I, I think <laughs> quoting um, uh, from Qaddafi, in which he was asked to opine on the issue of Zoroastrian marriages that took place in Ibn Qayyim. Sorry, Ibn Qayyim. Right? Yeah. And, and, and he opined after studying the matter and saying that, look, uh, this is some. This was a practice of that community, and although the, the state apparatus w was operating under the aegis of Sharia, mm -hmm. that, the, that, that the state would not get involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, am I paraphrasing right. that correctly? Okay. And I think that you were using that, or, or others have used that, I've certainly seen, to, to sort of c compare that by way of analogy to, uh, at least in the political arena, how Muslims should engage the issue of uh, uh, same-sex marriage. No, but I think that, 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 that there's... That there's that, a difference between, sorry, criminalizing something well, but there, there, and there, then there, sanctioning but something. There, there, but there are, a number, there, there are a number of differences here. Um, 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 let, let me give you a, a concrete example. Uh, at that conference, if you if you recall, um, um, I gave a paper on on the status of Halloween, and my argument in that paper was that I did not deem Halloween to be haram, and not just personal opinion. You know, processing it through you know usul fiqh and, and, and all these kinds of things. And though I did not feel that Halloween was haram, I did not permit my children to go trick or treating. No, no, I'm not passing judgment on anybody. Just, just, just relax. But no, no, I, I, I'm very serious. They missed out. Huh? They missed out. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they missed out. But, but, but the reason, 
the reason that I did not permit them was that I had a fear and a suspicion that this would not be for them to fall under too deeply the cultural authority of the dominant culture would be something that would be bad for them in terms of their own sense of who they were as Muslims. And we would have these fights. <laughs> Dad, you said it's not haram. Yes, it's not haram. But you ain't doing it. But you ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, and so, and so, and so, to, to argue that Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah, and by the way, you can go all the way back to Sahnun and Mudawana and find similar arguments. To argue that they said that, all right, to jump from that to we should support gay marriage, that's a stretch. What are the non shari implications? Just like of that move. Just like what are the non shari implications of my kids going trick or treat? This is a, that's a conversation we have to have. But and my point being that where are those conversations? Well, okay. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, it, well it's, let me it's, let me let me let me ask, let me ask you: uh-huh. Are we likely to have those conversations in an atmosphere where? By one slip of my tongue, I could be trashed for an entire month, mercilessly. Are we likely to have those kinds of conversations? Mm-hmm. So don't and don't blame the scholars. Then they're only human beings. Mm-hmm. And we're back. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to Dr. Jackson for not only sharing his time with everybody, but also allowing us to share uh, what he had to say with all of you in the audience. Yeah, you know, and I think that I think a lot of what, or at least some of the things that we were that we were able to touch on in the conversation, um, are, are kind of meaningful uh, for those who do listen to the podcast. Because, um, as as any uh, longtime listener knows, or even if you've just been able to kind of peruse our our catalog of episodes, uh, we've been very fortunate to both uh, be able to engage both scholars and quote unquote activists alike. So. I think that a lot of the sort of uh, points that we touched on in the conversation with Dr. Jackson um, are kind of meaningful in that regard. So, um, yeah, thank you for uh, for for. I, we hope we hope we hope we hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for listening as you always do. And um, I don't know. So we've got uh, some exciting episodes in the pipeline coming up as the new as the uh, as the year closes out. I guess right, Zucky. Very true. Yeah, yeah. So uh, continue to listen. Um, uh, I always do the honors, but why don't you do the honors this time and tell us where people can find us, engage us, and uh, and write us. Well, please do let us know what you think of the show. You can email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com. You can also hit like on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash diffusecongruence. Uh, also, we are on uh, iTunes, so please do go to iTunes and leave a star rating, leave a review. Every little bit helps, and every review that you leave gives us a sense of what's working for you and what isn't working for you. Uh, if you want to reach out to us personally, you can find me at my website, zakiscorner.com. That's Z-A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter and my Instagram. You can also find me at the Huffington Post or my movie reviews go up regularly uh and pervis where can people find you uh well you can definitely engage us on our facebook page uh i i do tend to respond um uh, i try to uh beat sucky to it um but you can also <laughs> find me you can also find me on twitter um at pf um at pf ahmed um and uh i'm sorry at pervez f ahmed sorry yeah, so you, you, you've forgotten your own thing yeah it's a new one it's a new one right so um for those again who've uh, who've listened to the show, kind of know that this is something that Zucky's uh, is uh, has has been prompting me to do for some time now. <laughs> <laughs> a more legible, a more legible Twitter handle, right? That's true. Yeah, and, and I'll avoid posting any sort of um, you know anti anti Muslim uh, you know uh, videos. That's, Just that, that's a good idea. That's that's yeah. Uh, that's, I, that's... I, I won't. I, I won't follow the you know suit from the president. So, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank, again, again, thanks a lot for listeners for listening, and uh, we hope you join us next time. And uh, as always, I uh, want to thank Zucky for uh, always helping facilitate this, and uh, thank you for listening. Until next time. <laughs>